Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the story of my best speculations probably in the last few years. And I will start with Acromas Memorial. This card was not very good in standard. I mean, this came out in M2013. So about four, four years ago, summertime, it came out and the set was very good. But this particular card cost seven, and unless it has kind of a effect that come into play effect that was really, really good at seven, it didn't see any standard play. This was in the trade binders all the time, and it was quite easy to trade for them when it was less than five dollars. I think it was like two to three dollars at some point in time. I mean, it was expensive, then it hit and got reprinted. So no standard play, and people would just much rather have the lands at the time. So it went under $5, and that was a good opportunity to trade and buy. I would later buy them for around $10, because I felt that was a good price. $10 and under, you had a very long period of time where you could have done that, and it has slowly ticked up to $17. What I liked about it was, A, I love Acroma. Acroma is my favorite angel uh, of all time, and I do collect Acromas on the side. But Acromas Memorial is pretty cool. It turns out it's also very, very good in EDH. Here's probably the most um, famous spec I'm known for, Philia. Uh, and you might ask, why do I have so many Philiars? Because my goal was to get 100 Philiars altered by different people. I'm now currently at 60 altered file layers. So altered means that I'm going to commission an artist to paint the file layer in a certain unique way. So I have file layers turned into RWB. I have file layers turned into Fire uh, Fate, not Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem, hopefully soon, as I'm really into that. And I accumulated them because I wanted to accumulate 100 of them. And I wanted people, I wanted to commission uh, different artists to do different stuff and then I wanted to frame the cards which they currently are but instead of a hundred I think there's what is it it's a five by five so it can hold 25 and I have two of them filled up so I have 50 of them but it is good it, it's gotten to the point where I can it's good that I have them but I'm running out of them when I send them to the artist to alter them, because again, right now it's about $60, right? For four, a play set. But sometimes an artist won't want to do eight, so it's $120. I bought these mostly for $2 and under, as I showed in my TCG player piggy bank or account. And I never regretted it. It was always my favorite card and it always will be my favorite card, no matter how many times I'm actually looking forward to a reprint because I'm literally running out of them to get alters. Now, Chromantic, let me tell you about this one. I am a big fan of Chromantic Lantern, a huge fan. I think I've voiced that opinion pretty strongly, and then it got reprinted, and I was like, oh, crap. But something interesting happened then. The reprint was only in one Commander's deck, and but people, I don't know if they were confused or didn't know. The price didn't go down that much. Essentially, the price went down enough for it to be an interesting buy. And RTR is recent enough that the card is not tremendously expensive. But when I looked at the artwork of Chromatic, I said, yes, this one is better, better than the original. And regardless of what's going to happen to the reprint or not reprint, or it's going to be reprinted again or not again, this is a EDH, amazing EDH card and the artwork in my opinion, I pick a lot of the cards I buy based on artwork. And that might sound kind of ridiculous to you, but as a collector, it's always worked out for the best. I love, Filer's artwork is beautiful. I like Acroma's Memorial, because I like Acroma. And Chromatic Lantern, I thought this was just so superior to the RTR edition that it would be good. So at that time, I owned 10 copies of it, 
Um, you could easily get it for a very long period of time under $50 and then using eBay coupons and stuff, you can get a play set for, I don't know, like 170 maybe. Okay, talking about artwork, I went on a crusade pretty much to get as many survival of the fittest as I could because I thought this was amazing looking and very beautiful and I've always wanted it and I recently I was able to pick some up in a collection and that's the only time I've actually seen it is when someone who plays a lot of magic is selling out then you kind of see it otherwise it's not really something that you can see in a binder there's not that many copies of it survival of the fittest um in my opinion this is one of my top favorite artworks of all time and as I get older I really care less about how competitive the card is and I just want to frame the card up and put it in my office. I have multiple offices so depending on which office if it's downtown Houston then that office tends to have survival of the fittest that would be in downtown Houston and chromatic lantern would be there too but something that's a little more like mm, a little more eh. like father can also go in downtown Houston although she's at my home office. It's what it is. The artwork is always interesting. And, you know, you do have clients and you do have employees be like, oh, hey, I really enjoyed that. I really like that, how it looks. And instead of spending a lot of money on uh, paintings from people I don't really care about, I buy magic and I like the card. And sometimes the card goes up in price. As collector's items, it makes perfect sense to me why this would go up in price. It is just beautiful. There's no other way to say it. It is gorgeous. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.